Um, but I'm here in, in North Carolina, I'm about an hour west of here in Greensboro. Um, moved to Greensboro about a year ago I'm from Florida, where I, most of my experience has been I'm working in the field um, with landowners. Um, what I'm going to cover is about what CNMPs are, what they're not, um, what's required, who's required to have them, and really what's changed. Um, CNMPs have been around for a while and a new policy change came out and I'm basically going to relay to you the format with regard to that new policy change. So a comprehensive, a comprehensive nutrient management plan is just that. It's a management plan. It's a game strategy, really, for the landowner. How to do, what to do, when to do, where to do. Um, and it needs to address three these three resource concerns. You heard Terry Ruck's presentation yesterday that there's nine categories, 31 resource concerns. Well, this covers three of those categories. Soil erosion, water quality, and air quality. So what is it? It's a dynamic plan to be sustainable. Um, and I say dynamic because it's, it's not unchanging. Um, it, it's something that's going to need to be modified. You know, agriculture changes. You know, landowners have to adapt to markets. So this is a plan that needs to be able to adapt to change. Um, and it's a record of decision. You know, what is he going to do? Where is he going to do it? And what the time frame of that is. Um, it's what it's not. What it is not is not a one-off document. It's not well, something that you do once, set it on a shelf, and never look at it again. Um, it's not intended to be a regulatory document, although regulatory agencies do take our document. Um, it, it was developed to be a voluntary plan for the landowner, um, but regulatory agencies do take our document and use it for regulatory purposes. <coughs> so who's required to have one? Well, these are two excerpts from our policy. I've gone through and I've highlighted kind of the key points, the key words. Um, you'll see that it's for animal waste um, storage and treatment and handling. It's for animal feeding operations. Uh, you'll see nutrient management in there. Um, and this is from our EQIP manual and CNMP policy. So bottom line, it's for anyone who's receiving technical or financial assistance from NRCS for an animal feeding operation or a concentrated animal feeding operation and for waste management and nutrient management. If it ticks those three things, they're going to need a CNMP. A bit of history, you know, 1999, so CNMPs have been around for a while, right? 1999, um, USDA and EPA got together and created a unified strategy for animal feeding operations. Um, a CNMP was born out of that as a voluntary plan um, for the landowner to manage his, his waste and his nutrients. Um, at that time, it was an eight-part format. You know, you know how government goes, things kind of graduate and build. By 2009, it was a ten-part document. And um, from being from the field, we had to create these documents and they became, for large operations, multi-bindered. Um, it, it was intended to be a one-off document that everything was, all the good information was supposed to be in. But it became a lot of sections, a lot of information. A lot of people had to sign it. You know, if one little thing changed, it kind of ticked through the whole document. And it took a long time to develop. So, you know, we realized that this was a problem. So. In um, 2015, NRCS came back and said, you know, how can we make this document better? Um, the plan was to go back to something that is more what we do, which is conservation planning. So a CNMP is a subset of a conservation plan. Just like an irrigation water management plan is a subset plan in NRCS, you know, this CNMP is meant to be a, a subset plan to deal with these three resource concerns, soil erosion, water quality and air quality. And this is our new format, four parts, three sections. And um, I, I like to say, you know, that first part, the signature page, is pretty important. Why? Because it's where the rubber meets the road, right? It's an agreement between NRCS and the landowner. 
that yeah, I'm going to implement th this strategy for my farm. Um, and really, there's just some basic information on there. You know, sometimes this is the easiest page to write and the hardest one to get done because nobody wants to sign it. Um, they feel like you know, making that commitment's a hard thing. Um, you know, they're they're going to be committed to this. So I try and get a lot of input from the landowner. He's got to buy into this, and that buy-in has to be on the front end and all the way through. And to you know, echo what Kelly Shank said yesterday, you know, we got to be working together to get this done. They really have to have a part in the planning process. So there's really only three signatures on this. You know, if you looked at the previous format, there might be a page and a half of signatures of everybody who basically touched that document had to have a, a signature on it. Uh, the first section is dealing with the production area or the farmstead area. Um, in that section would be the record of decisions, basically what practices, how many, or quantity of that practice, um, the dates planned, um, there would be maps associated with those practices, there would be animal inventory, um, manure storages and volumes and capacities, um, import, export, and on-farm transfers of manure, and any implementation requirements if needed. And implementation requirements are kind of a new word. It's what we used to call job sheets. So if you see that, you just think job sheet. In section two, it deals with everything associated with the land treatment. So section one, production area, section two, land treatment. Trying to keep it simple. And again, it's a record of decision with all the practices associated with land treatment. Um, maps and field boundaries and setbacks. Uh, field, filter strips and um, any um, wetland areas. Anything that might be affecting um, the land treatment you would see in those maps. Um, a NAC set, which I'll talk about in a minute, and any implementation requirements associated with the land treatment. Section three is nutrient management, right? It's a comprehensive nutrient management plan, so you gotta have nutrient management. And that part really didn't change. Pretty much all the information associated with, with nutrient management, um, the risk analysis, any nutrient uh, nitrogen leaching or phosphorus index, um, setback distances, soil test data, basically what you know what you're basing, what you're hanging your hat on, um, manure analysis, uh, any planned cropping systems, rotation sequences, um, and you get down to it, you're looking at the balance, the bookkeeping on what you're doing with those nutrients on the land treatment area. So what's been added? I don't know if you got a chance to listen to Greg Zwicky's talk this morning, who's in this room. He talked about NACSAT. NACSAT's been added. You know, he talked about NRCS needed um, a tool. And, and they contributed to this tool um, for air quality. And it's to develop awareness um, it's not a requirement for less than 300 animal units, but I'm finding it's a really good tool, um, a method to get conversation going with the landowner. You know, if you, if you haven't run through it, I would recommend that you do, just from the standpoint to see the questions that are asked, because it's, it's <coughs> thought provoking. Um, when you get down and start asking the questions, how do you do business? And that's really what NACSAT does, is how do you do business about these, um, eight categories, I think, and to look at those questions about feeds and storages and, and even ask questions about, you know, perception from neighbors, you know, what's going on in your roads outside and how are you handling things, are you covering things, um, mortality, it asks a lot of interesting questions. So if you haven't been through NACSAT, I really would uh, encourage you to take a look at that tool. And like J um, Greg said, you know, you've got all these different um, animal types that you can go through, um, and these bars indicate um, not good and bad, but good and how can you do better. Um, the white is not necessarily bad. It may not just be something that you're not doing right now. Um, it's neither good nor bad. It's just how your system is functioning. So, you know, you'd like to see green, 
Um, there's no score associated with it, and it's, it's really just to bring awareness up to the landowner on how he could maybe manage things a little better for air quality. So what's been removed? And I say removed, some of these things are not gone. They're just not in this document anymore. Um, things like an operation and maintenance plan are still a requirement with NRCS. They're associated with the practice. They would be put in a case folder for a landowner. So it's not really removed, it's just not in this document. This document is not the one four binder document that it used to be. It's really the strategy. It's the strategy for that landowner on how he's going to manage his animal manure and his nutrients in order to be sustainable. Um, record keeping. He still has to do record keeping. You know, it's not just not in the document. He doesn't have all this forms stuffed in this document, you know, adding bulk. He still has to do it, you know, he can do it other ways. He just has to be able to track the things um, he needs to track. And let's see, engineering plans. You know, the CNMP is required to be implemented. Um, the CNMP is supposed to be developed prior to implementing the practices. So you may have at this point a CNMP and practices may be designed after it. But in the record of decisions from your CNMP, it may say I need a waste storage pond of this this size, or a compost or composting facility of this size. So it's it's recording the decisions the landowner is making um, on the practices he's going to implement. Right now, states are responding. Um, this is a national change in format. So states are now responding state by state on how they're going to change what they do within state. Um, they're working on their templates. You know, we did a national template on CNMPs, and now states are going through and trying to see how they have to respond um, because a lot of state regulations are written, you know, with NRCS policy going hand in hand. Some states say, you know, do what NRCS tells you to do. So they're responding, um, and we're going through nationally and doing trainings. One of the things I have to do, have to, like to do is go around um, the country and I get to go to four different states this year providing comprehensive nutrient management training um, to our field so our people can get up on what they need to do. And, in, you know, NRCS tends to change, we were talking about at lunch, you know, how documents change. Well, NRCS is trying to be proactive and, and going to track this document to see how it can be improved over time. So this is probably not going to be the last change for the CNNP. Also, um, there is a template that has come out in Manure Management Planner. Uh, Manure Management Planner is a software that we uh, utilize in order to create a CNMP. And there was a template developed for this new policy change. And you can go to our policy and you can see um, what our policy says more specifically on how this document is to be developed and all the things that's supposed to be in this document. And that's the end. Any questions? We have plenty of time for questions, so questions or comments for Sandy? Okay, and what you alluded to in your, your uh, talk, you know, in Maryland, we use the CMMP for our CAFO permit. Right. Okay? And we switched from the old format to the new format, took a lot of the stuff away that we looked for. Mm -hmm. We worked with our local NRCS, and they were kind enough to add a couple of little minor things <coughs> that, that you had taken out. But the problem that our, our customers, our the farmers, are having is you refer, in, in, in at least the Maryland version of it, there is a page with a, with a bunch of URLs in the back, where before there used to be actual documents in there that the farmers would have a paper copy of and they could refer to. A lot of our farmers don't have internet access. They don't, you know, so the, it's a hassle for them to access these documents. So what we wind up doing is we wind up giving them these documents that they add, add to their, their, their you know, this new version of the CNMP. 
So, you know, yeah, I could see, you know, you give a farmer a document this thick, he's just going to stick it on the shelf and do whatever the hell he wants. But, uh, you know, we, we, the initial cut of it, we used it in, like, at least for our purposes. It might be good for, for to run the farm, mm -hmm. but for our purposes, it, it wasn't accurate. Plus, we found that the farmers couldn't access all these URLs in the back. Right, and it's an ongoing thing, you know. NRCS is moving to try and do more and more things online, even do applications online. And we understand, uh, there's a lot of farmers that I've worked with who really didn't even have a hardly an email address. Um, but that's, you know, that's where business is going right now. Progress, right? It's progress. And, you know, it, it, it allows, you know, not having the paper forms in the exact form to fill out. Uh, some states require particular forms. I know Michigan requires a certain format um, but there's apps now. There's great apps now. I think it's Utah. I think Utah State University has a app that tracks, you know, where manure goes on farm. And you know, somebody can use it on on their, you know, iPhone. So that kind of flexibility to, to do their record keeping is huge. Is there any place where I could find available apps developed by different? Yeah, I, I just searched manure. I, um, on my Android and, and came up with a bunch of apps. Um, and, and I can, you know, can give you my card and, and I can tell you where a couple of those are. Let me just, just a little comment. A CMP was never to be a permanent document. Oh, never absolutely. Was. Yeah, and then there were Yeah, but I guess what I would say is the states can make modifications and updates right. to the format to help meet some of your requirements if you would like. They yeah, but more like partners. Right. Well, and a landowner can put stuff in, you know, in a binder behind that document. You know, we're not telling them not to do that. Yeah. And you know, things like uh, an emergency response plan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah, he still needs to have that information handy. We're not telling him not to do that. It's just the you know they got back to what the CNMP was supposed to be, and that was a, a strategy to be sustainable. And what you know, what you need, what information do you need just to, to have that? I mean, I remember talking to a landowner, and he, you know, I, he had said, well, "I need this information." I said, "Well, you have it." He's like, "Where do I have it?" And I said, "You know, that big thick document I gave you. Oh, it's in there." And I think he was using it as a paperweight somewhere. Um, so you know, it's you know, it needs to be a working document. Sakup has promised me a yeah, quick question. Examples of uh, four or three states where NRCS is working with extension to promote this work on NACSAT. That. Um, there were 20 partners that were associated with NACSAT, I think in Greg's presentation. And Greg's really the, the, our key person with NACSAT, so he would be the best person to talk to. Um, and he'll be here um, through tomorrow, I think. Um, but yeah, I think there were 20 partners that were, you know, universities associated with working no, with NACSAT. I'm talking about past that. Oh, past past that. that. No, are you, NACSAT's are you new. I mean, how it's 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 a pretty Four new tool. Yeah. But I know state what we uh, uh, Virginia would be the state that we've been working with with the extension on because they have technical service providers who are extension employees. So so we've we've been working in that that aspect. And when we do the trainings, that's one of the things we do invite or we ask the states if they want to invite. Penn right. State would be a uh, yeah, state extension. We, we try to get others involved in, in the trainings that we're doing so that they can see kind of the direction of the program. I usually make sure I have a training app. <coughs> um, if I have a training with kind of the students, they all of our partners. I'm going to cut off the conversation so we can go ahead to the next talk here. Jeff's uh, cutting into his own presentation time, so I guess that's okay. 